Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 87. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Business 210 Chapter 8. Hey, this is our last video. This whole chapter is confidence intervals and we're going to talk about how to calculate N for your confidence interval. Now here's the formula for calculating N when you have X bar and Z. And it's just simply derived from our uh, error or margin of error formula. And in the textbook and in the uh, ha my handwritten notes, I uh, show you that. Ah, so let's look at our example here. A consumer group will like to estimate the mean monthly electric le electricity charge for a single family house in July within $5. Using a 99% confidence interval, uh, based on, we're going to calculate it, based on similar studies, the standard deviation is estimated to be 20 bucks. How large is the sample, how large a sample is required? So we're given standard deviation of 20 bucks. Our error, that is the uh, margin of error in essence, that's the whole amount already uh, calculated. So you in essence need to estimate this before you start your experiment to then get the sample size then to go out and get the samples. So here, we would plug these in, we have to calculate this uh, Z value here uh, times our S, which is our uh, estimate for the sample uh, standard deviation, and then our error. Here's the uh, formula explicitly. Our textbook gives it a little bit different. They have each one of these values squared, but you can do it this way also. Uh, here's our values. So first we have to calculate our alpha. Well, that one's easy. We've been doing this many, many times already so far in this chapter. Oh yeah, we're not willing to take much risk, right? So we said 99 confidence level, so alpha or significance level is 0 0.01. We'll divide that by 2 because we're going to calculate our Z. And as we've done so many times before, our norm S inverse. Remember, it always goes from negative infinity. So if we want the Z up on the upper end, and that's the tiny, that's the half a little percent up on the upper end and half a percent on the lower end, we can just do 1 minus that. And there's our Z. Uh, so our estimate for the sample size will be this. Now, and we're always going to uh, round up if we get some decimal. So equals our Z times our S, we're given that. Uh, sometimes you actually have to go out and even before you calculate this N, you do a sample study to get an estimate for this uh, standard deviation. So you already got that, but we're going to use that right here. We're calculating our N, the sample size, and then divided by our E. Now that's not going to work right there because if we square it, the order of operations, all of this stuff, would be done after a uh, exponent. So we have to put all of this in parentheses and then put an exponent right here too. Caret shift 6 2. And there we have it. Now all we need to do is round this up. Now we've seen round and round up. We're going to use the round up function again. There's a round, round down, and round up. Round follows normal rounding rules. Round follows the up rounding rules. It always rounds up. Uh, and uh, round down always rounds down. So we'll round up. We'll click on our value. And comma zero, as we've seen a few times, that's how you round to the integer. Two would be to the penny. 107. That is our estimated sample size. All right, now let's look at an example for proportions. Here's going to be our formula for n. We're trying to calculate the n for a confidence interval. p bar times 1 minus p bar times z divided by e squared. Now this formula also similarly can be derived from our uh, margin of error formula. And the textbook, my handwritten notes, and the PowerPoints all have an example of that. Here's our example, if I can make it a little bit bigger. The Kennel Club wanted to estimate the proportion of children that have a dog as a pet. If the club wanted to estimate to be within 3%, that's our error, of the population proportion, how many children would they need to contact? Assuming 95% confidence interval. And the club estimated that P bar 
would be 30%. That is children that have a dog as a pet. So let's go ahead and calculate this over here. We've entered our data into the sheet. Error, P bar, and a level of confidence. Our alpha 1 minus level of confidence. Our alpha divided by 2, that's the uh, little bit on the top end if you were to plot it. And that's what we use in our norm S inverse. So we'll divide that by 2. That's the error that uh, the population parameter will not be in our interval. All right, Z, norm S inverse. And since we're going all the way up to just uh, this is the area probability above the last bit of our confidence interval. So we're going to click on that. Uh, that will not work. That, By the way, that would give us the m minus of it. You actually could just go like this. Uh, but in general, that's not how we do it. We'd explicitly put the right probability inside like that, 1 minus, and that'll give us the z on the upper end. There are always many ways to do things in Excel, or in math for that matter. All right, now our formula here, p times 1 minus p, and then z divided by r squared. So equals, and we get our p, p bar times 1 minus our p bar times, and then in parentheses, we'll take our z divided by our error. And shift six. Ooh. Now, I accidentally hit enter before I wanted it. A rule of thumb is when you're doing formulas, never accept what Bill Gates and his friends are suggesting. Never click that one. Always click no and then OK and then edit it yourself. It, it, the, just the probability of that message being correct is very low. If you read them all over time, you'll just learn to ignore it. Especially when you're doing big formulas, it really has no way of knowing what you were trying to do. Uh, so there we go. Enter. Now, that's our estimated sample size. Let's go ahead and round up. Round up, comma, zero, close parentheses. And there it is, our estimate for sample size to go out and uh, make it an estimate of proportion of children that have a dog as a pet. So that is our N for a proportion. All right, that is chapter eight. We're going to use all this stuff we learn about confidence intervals uh, coming up in the next chapter for hypothesis testing. Uh, perhaps the uh, most fun chapter in all of this statistics class. So I'll look forward to next chapter. See you then.